Welcome to St. Malachy's the Actors' Chapel for the second Sunday of Lent. sacred mysteries. Let us pause to call to mind our sins. Give us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, Go forth from the land of your kinsfolk and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the communities of the earth shall find blessing in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him. Responsorial Psalm Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from 2 Timothy. Beloved, bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design, and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with them. And Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. And then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, just as we're getting all settled down into our Lenten disciplines of praying and fasting and almsgiving, we begin to hear stories now of people on the move. Abram going to see what has been promised by the Lord. The disciples traveling with Jesus, going up the mountain, having the experience of the transfiguration, and then coming down the mountain and having to trust once again was meant for them to be a life-changing experience. Lent should have that impact on us. We should come out of it having had a revelation, a transfiguration moment, something in what it is that we do during the 40 days and 40 nights should have that impact on us to say that Christ is at the center of my life and that as I seek to listen more intently to him, as I seek to follow him, journey with him, that as Paul reminds us, sometimes it's enduring hardship along the way. Not always a physical hardship or a financial one. Sometimes it's a hardship that just comes from a difference of opinion, a difference of outlook on life. We like to say that my time is my own, and so maybe not this year, but another year, there'll be an opportunity. And the urgency of what happened in the transfiguration should be an urgency that we take seriously. We don't know how many more Lenten journeys we get to make, but we know this one is before us. And we know that as we're on it, indeed good things are happening in our lives. And even if we're not so sure that it's good, if it's bringing us closer and allowing us to open and to unburden unto the Lord, that which would otherwise slow us down and preoccupy us, then we are indeed making progress. It's sometimes not always being able to see, as Abram saw, a promised land immediately. Sometimes it comes through the blessing of being close to the Lord, hearing his word, and being open in our responses. Let us profess the faith that unites us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us together offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father. For the Church, may Christ inspire each of us in our efforts to be instruments of mercy and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and reconciliation in our world, especially in nations plagued by war and violence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those suffering from mental illness, may they experience God's healing touch. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may the grace of the Holy Spirit enable us to grow in knowledge and love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our beloved dead, may they soon come into the fullness of life in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We offer our prayers and ask that you answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we place before you with joy these offerings which we bring as eternal remedy, praying that they may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith, and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, as without end we acclaim. He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice 
and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Saints Malachi and Genesius, Cecilia and Vitus, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, forever and ever. Amen. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, we pray as Jesus taught us. as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for his blessing. O Lord, look upon those who call to you and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you and your loved ones forever and ever. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.